Hi everyone, Abdur here. So today I'm going to be talking about the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Now I've had this mount for almost three years now, so I have had a good amount of experience with it. So I can give you a review where I explain all the good stuff about it, the bad stuff and the ugly stuff. Now, first of all, the EQ6R Pro is, uh, I would say it's a mid-range mount with a 44 pound payload capacity, which is quite significant. And with a mount like this, you can use a scope um, I would say up to about an 8 inch reflector, maybe a 10 inch fast imaging reflector if you're using that. Uh, you can use a C11 Edge HD for visual or for imaging with a Hyperstar uh, for deep sky objects or if you're going to be imaging the planets you can use a C11 at F10 or F7 as well or F20. So it is a mount that's capable of carrying quite a quite a bit of weight. Here are some of the images that I've taken with this mount over the last couple of years and as you can see it is capable of producing some very very good results. So let's go over the good stuff about this mount, the things that I've really liked over the last couple of years. One of the good things I like about it is that it guides very, very accurately. So it can guide as well as the seeing in my area allows. So when the seeing is good, it guides well below 0.5 arc seconds per pixel, total error. And when the seeing is average or poor, it guides between 0.7 and 0.9 arc seconds per pixel. So it is capable of very, very good guiding, in my case, limited only by the seeing conditions. I do like the load capacity of 44 pounds that this mount offers. And my usual imaging rig is a C11 Edge HD, which weighs about 28 pounds. And with the accessories and camera and Hyperstar adapter, it weighs about 35 pounds and my focal length is 560 millimeters which is not very long but I wouldn't recommend imaging at f7 or f10 with a c11 on this mount uh, you'd need a much more expensive mount for that but if you are using a hyperstar adapter it's perfectly fine. It's also quite capable of carrying an 8 inch reflector uh, or uh, I would say up to a 5 or 6 inch refractor without much issue and also it could likely carry a 10 inch imaging reflector as well but that might be pushing it because a 10 inch reflector is quite heavy and quite large uh, but if you are imaging at let's say a thousand millimeters with a 10 inch reflector it probably could carry uh, a scope like that but it would be at its limits in my opinion. The usual recommendation of keeping the mount at about half its rated capacity for imaging uh, but it's totally fine to push that a bit so that's not a hard and fast rule by any means in my experience. The other thing that I really like about this mount is that it is very quiet compared to uh, my old NEQ6 Pro and compared to my current C gym mount. Uh, this is a very very quiet mount so I have no problem using it at night. I don't have to worry about waking the neighbors or you know bothering anyone else at a star party. So that's one thing that I really like about it. The other thing I really like about this mount is this USB connection that it has on the mount. So you can plug a USB cable directly into the mount and plug the other side into a laptop and control it from there. That's something that I really like compared to using a hand controller or compared to plugging an, a cable into the hand controller which just becomes a little bit, uh, a little hard to manage. So this is uh, very streamlined and it works very well. I haven't had any issues with this built-in USB port. It has always worked flawlessly for me. Uh, one other thing that I really, really like about this mount is the built-in carry handle. Since the mount is fairly heavy, uh, that carry handle is a lifesaver. When I'm lifting my uh, my CGM mount, for example, it's very awkward and unwieldy to lift that mount and put it on top of the tripod, but the carry handle on the EQ6R uh, very very nice to have. One other thing that I should mention is that uh, the altitude bolts on this mount are improved so if you used a previous Skywatcher mount such as the NEQ6 Pro or the HEQ5 that uh, that had issues with those altitude bolts bending when you're trying to do polar alignment Skywatcher did make some improvements in this case and the the rear altitude bolt is very heavy duty that that is a chunky bolt and the one at the front is also quite good so you don't have to worry about the bolts bending like they did in the older NEQ6 I still wouldn't recommend uh, 
tightening them down too hard if you have a, a large scope on there um, you could end up gouging the aluminum inside so what you normally have to do is you loosen the bolt at the front and then you tighten the bolt at the back or you loosen the bolt at the back and then you tighten the one at the front so it's one or the other it's a push-pull system but it works fine it's not quite as accurate as some of the other higher end mounts have here are some of the issues that I've noticed with this mount. Uh, the first is that although the polar alignment uh, bolts, the altitude bolts work fairly well and they're much heavier duty than in the previous mount, they're not quite as precise as some of, let's say, the, the Ioptron mounts or some of the other higher end mounts, or even some of the cheaper Ioptron mounts in the same price category uh, where they have this kind of gear-like system instead of this push-pull system. So that's one thing that, that uh, could be improved still. I also find that the azimuth bolts for polar alignment are not very precise. You can end up overshooting your polar alignment and then having to undo it and redo it. So if you set up the mount every single time you're gonna be imaging, it, it can be a little, little annoying to not be able to get accurate polar alignment right away. The other thing that I would like to mention is that uh, when I first got this mount, uh, I'd had it for maybe about six months or so. One of the end caps at the end of the belt drive uh, fell off and you can see it right over here where my finger is and it just fell off the belt and I was wondering what was going wrong, why my declination axis wasn't wasn't spinning. So I ended up opening it and taking a look and I noticed that little washer had fallen off. So I put a tiny dab of glue on there and then I very carefully, uh, and the glue is on the outside, I very carefully put it back on, making sure that the, the glue does not touch my belt. So the best way to do that would be first put that end cap on and then put a tiny dab of glue on the outside. And since then I've not had any issues with that, so that has worked out perfectly. Uh, but it is something to be aware of in case you ever run into this issue, that's how to solve it. One other issue that I've noticed is that um, there is the potential to have some declination backlash with this mount as with almost every other mount in this price category, uh, but that's a fairly easy fix. You can open up this, this deck motor housing and uh, adjust the belt tension. So uh, I won't cover that in this video. You can just Google uh, EQ6R belt adjust or EQ6R uh, deck backlash and they'll show you exactly how to adjust the tension. But once I adjusted the tension a little bit on that belt, uh, the backlash pretty much went away and I haven't had any issues with that since then. Here are a couple of things that uh, Skywatcher can improve. As I previously mentioned, the polar alignment system, it, it's okay, works fairly well and works much better than the previous Skywatcher mounts, but it is something that can be improved. Uh, perhaps a system like what Ioptron has with their, their screw-like system instead of this push-pull system would be better. And um, also one other thing that Skywatcher uh, can work on is making sure that those, those little end caps uh, that hold the belt in place uh, are using better glue or some sort of better retaining system so they don't fall off. Um, mine was one of the first mounts probably that came to Canada. So I bought it right in the beginning. So it's likely the Skywatcher has already fixed that issue and it wasn't a huge issue anyway, but that's just something that that can be improved if it hasn't already. And one other thing to mention is that the hand controller I have found doesn't always work very well in cold weather. Once the temperature starts going below about minus five to minus 10, the LCD screen on it starts to go blank. And that's an issue I've noticed with almost every single other mount in this price category as well. So it's not just Skywatcher mounts. But I know that some mounts, like some of the Ioptron mounts, like the SEM70, for example, do have a built-in heater under the LCD screen, so you don't have this issue with cold weather. And um, if Skywatcher could implement something like that, it wouldn't cost more than a couple of dollars, I'm sure, to implement. But that would be very useful for those of us who image in really cold climates or who use these mounts for visual observing in cold climates, like you know Canada or parts of the U.S. I hope you found that helpful and uh, uh, overall I would definitely recommend this mount. I think it is one of the best deals available in this price category and if you're jumping up to the next price category then you could look at something like the Ioptron SEM70. I hope you found some of this helpful. 
Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to post them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer. Clear skies.